The biggest hiring season of the year for entry-level actuarial jobs and internships is coming up quickly. So what do you need to do to your resume to make sure that you really stand out amongst the hundreds of other applicants? Well, you are in luck because in this video, I'm going to be counting down the seven biggest mistakes that I see on so many future actuary resumes. That way you can go fix your own resume to make sure that you get noticed this hiring season. And by the way, I've looked at hundreds and hundreds of actuarial resumes. By the way, I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator Community, where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates so that they can stand out from the competition and get their very first actuarial job. Now let's get into this video. Three, two, one, go. Okay, the number seven mistake that I see people make on their resume all the time is that they make it look like they've stopped taking exams or that they don't intend on taking anymore. A lot of the time on actuarial resumes, I see an exam section, but it says exam P passed in this month and year, exam FM passed in this month and year, and that's often all that's on the resume. They don't give any indication that they plan on taking other exams in the future. So what you can do is to actually include the next exam that you plan to take on your resume. And that's going to help show employers that you are truly interested in continuing to pursue the actuarial career path and take more exams. If you don't put that future intention on your resume, they might just assume that you aren't really dedicated 100% to the actuarial career because you don't show any proof that you're still committed to taking the actuarial exam. So always include that next exam on your resume. Now, ideally, it's going to be within about six months of when you're applying to those jobs because you don't want to make it look like you're going to wait a year or more to take that next exam. You want to show initiative like you plan to take it as soon as it's feasible. Okay, the sixth biggest mistake that I see on actuarial resumes is inconsistent formatting. Now, this happens all the time, most often on the date section. So usually when you have your resume and you have the experience section, on the right-hand side of the resume, you see the date and year from which you started to when you ended that specific position that you worked in. A lot of the time, I see inconsistencies in those dates. For for example, sometimes there's a space between the dash or sometimes they use the full month or sometimes they just use three letters of the first month. But the most important thing is to make sure there's a lot of consistency between those dates. You want consistency between your headlines. Make sure they all look the same. You want consistency between your spacing, between sections on your resume. So it's really important on your resume to make sure that you are consistent with your formatting because that's going to show your professionalism, but also your attention to detail in the actuarial world, attention to detail is really important. So if you can't even do that on your resume, then it might indicate to actuarial employers that you're not going to be able to do that on the job. So always double check, triple check your resume to make sure all the formatting is consistent throughout. And you might even want to get someone else to check that too, because sometimes when you're looking at your own resume, it's easy to skip those kind of things or miss them because you're so close to it and you've worked so closely with it. Okay, the number fifth most common mistake that I see on actuarial resumes is not highlighting your strengths. Now, it's often been said that there's about six seconds that you have to make a first impression on whoever's looking at your actuarial resume. Only six seconds. So that means within six seconds, you have to make a really great impression that's going to make them want to continue to read your resume and learn more about you. Now, if you have a whole page of a resume or sometimes even longer, it's gonna be really difficult to make sure the employer looking at your resume really understands why you're a great fit. If they have to read a whole page, it's would be impossible to do that within six seconds. So what I highly recommend you do is include a career profile at the top of your resume that summarizes in just three or four sentences what makes you an amazing candidate for the job. That way the employer can quickly read that career profile and they don't have to scan through or go through your whole resume in order to figure out why you make a great fit for the position you're applying to. Okay, the number fourth most common mistake that I see on actuarial resumes is that they're too long. Now, I'm not a big movie watcher, but you know how sometimes movies just drag on and on and on and on and you feel like they could have cut out 30% of the movie and still got the main point across? Well, the same applies to your resume. You don't want to make it so long that you're including a whole bunch of extra details in there that aren't really going to help you improve your chances of getting a job. Your resume should only have things on it that are going to increase your chances of getting the specific job that you are applying to. A lot of the time I see people include different types of experience and different qualifications that they have and 
experience that they've done in the past. But since it's not really relevant to the actuarial career, it's not really going to benefit you to put that on your resume unless you are able to pick out things from that experience that are relevant to the actuarial field. So for example, if you worked in a restaurant serving dinner to people for five years, that's not necessarily going to be relevant to the actuarial career. And if you put that on your resume, it's going to make it longer. But also the thing is that it's going to add things to your resume that the employer then has to read. And you don't want the employer having to spend time reading things that aren't going to help your chances of getting an actuarial job. So my advice to you is to go through your resume and really make sure that everything on it is actually relevant and is actually necessary to include on your resume. And then anything that isn't, cut it out because ideally you want to keep your resume for entry level actuarial positions to just one page. Now there are going to be some people out there that have lots of experience that needs to go on the resume because it's all going to help them in getting an actuarial job. And if that's the case for you, then definitely you can go beyond one page. But for most future actuaries, I see that one page is enough. Okay, now we're down to the third most common mistake that I see. And this one kind of relates back to what I just talked about. And that is not relating your past experience to the position that you are applying to. This is so, so, so important because a lot of the time I do see actuarial resumes that have experience on there that's really not relevant to the actuarial career. Now, almost every single job, no matter what you've done in your past history, there are parts of it that are going to be relevant and beneficial in an actuarial career. The most important thing is that you figure out what those things are in your past experience and include only those things on your resume. Like I talked about earlier, if you are serving food to people at dinner, so that type of job might not necessarily seem super relevant to the actuarial career, and it's not, but you have to find things within that experience that are. For example, you probably were able to improve your communication skills quite well in a position like that since you are talking to lots of different people. So communication is something that you'd want to highlight from that experience you have. You wouldn't necessarily want to highlight experience serving plates to people's tables because actuarial employers aren't looking for someone to serve plates to tables, right? So when you go to create your actuarial resume, make sure that the bullet points that you include in your experience section tie back to things that are going to make you a better candidate for an actuarial career. This is something that does tend to be fairly difficult for a lot of future actuaries because a lot of the time they don't fully understand what they will be doing when they start working in actuarial jobs. So I am going to be doing an actuarial resume boot camp in a few weeks from now. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, make sure you stay to the end because I'm going to tell you more details about how you can get into that session. Okay, the number two most common mistake that I see on actuarial resumes is not backing up your claims with real proof. Okay, so a lot of the time I see pizza stores that claim they have, let's say the best pizza in town or the best Panzerati in town, but I never really believe them because they are biased. I'm fairly skeptical because it's them saying that they have the best pizza or the best Panzerati in town. So when I get in that situation, usually I'll look at their website to see what makes their pizza so special. I'll look up Google reviews to see if other people actually think that this pizza is really, really good. And you probably do the same. And the point here is that you don't believe them because they are coming from a biased source. The same thing applies to your resume. If you say in your, let's say your technical skills section that you're really good with Excel, like you know it inside and out, but you don't have any proof of that on your resume other than just one line that says you're advanced with Excel, then employers likely aren't really going to believe it. But the way to prove this to employers is to actually back that experience up with real projects or real world experience that you have using those tools. That's gonna make it more feasible to employers that you really know how to use this program. And during interviews, you also wanna dive in deeper on this so that they truly understand that you have an in-depth knowledge of those skills and qualifications. By the way, if you have liked this video so far and it's given you some helpful resume tips and pointed out maybe some mistakes that you've been making on your resume, please give this video a thumbs up so that it can spread to more future actuaries that really need this information. Thank you so, 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 so much. Okay, now let's get into the number one mistake that I see future actuaries making on their resume. And that is assuming that the reader of the resume is going to have background knowledge that they really don't have. So a lot of the time on entry-level actuaries, I'll see the experience section and there'll be a whole bunch of great points there. But a lot of the time there's language that's very specific to the 
company that they worked for or there's abbreviations or acronyms used on the resume and those don't get explained anywhere. So it can be really difficult for the employer to understand what you're actually talking about because you know what you're talking about. You worked at that company on that specific project or that specific software for a long time. But the employer that's reading your resume, they don't really know what that is because they didn't work at that company. So when you are creating your actuarial resume, it's really important that you become more general. You don't want to be really specific. So as an example, I was reviewing a resume of an AAC member the other day and what I noticed was that they had a bullet point on their resume under the experience section that said they had been responsible for inputting data into the integration analysis system. Now, no one really knows what the integration analysis system is unless they worked at that specific company. So there may be things on your resume too that make sense to you but don't make sense to an employer. See, we have no idea what the integration analysis system is, so that makes it really hard for an employer to understand what you're talking about there. What you want to do is find a more general way to describe that so that someone in HR can understand it, so that someone in any company can explain it, so that your spouse or friend could understand it even if they never worked at that company. When you include things like this on your resume that not everyone understands, it makes the reader have to think. And one of the things that you don't want to make employers do is have to think about your resume. What you want is for them to completely understand it easily without having to figure out any details and that's going to make it easier for you to get into that interview position. Okay now if you are someone that is planning to start looking for your first entry-level actuarial job this fall in the hiring season then I have something really special for you. In the next few weeks I think at the beginning of September I'm going to be running an entry-level actuarial resume boot camp and this is going to be a workshop where I'm going to be going through all the different sections of your resume and helping you to develop those and word them really well so that your resume stands out to actuarial employers and that will really increase your chances of getting a job. Like I've talked about in this video, it's really important that you cater your past experience to actuarial jobs. It's really important that you have a great career profile that's going to help you summarize what you've been able to accomplish and all your qualifications really quickly at the top of your resume. It's also really important that you include technical skills throughout your resume so that employers have confidence that you really have those technical skills and that you've used them in other positions. So during this resume boot camp, we're going to be going through how to do all that, all the different sections of your resume, and make sure that it's the best it can possibly be. I'm also going to be spending some time giving live feedback to participants during this session. So you may be able to submit pieces of your resume for me to review and provide feedback on so that you can improve it even further. This is the only time of year I'm going to be hosting this session because the fall hiring season is coming up and there are only 15 spots available in this workshop. It is a paid workshop so if you are interested in potentially joining that make sure you go check out all the details. I will leave a link to them in the description down below and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye for now!